Okay, this training session is for payroll schedules. Now, the importance of payroll schedules is that it is going to be identifying the pay period begin date, end date, and pay date for each one of your pay period reports. So the pay dates on your payroll schedule should be the same as the dates that the employees are paid. So this must match what is in your payroll software. So whatever you are entering on our payroll schedule in Gemini has to match exactly what is in your payroll software. Now this is mandatory, so you are required to make one every year prior to uploading your first pay period report. You are going to have this open to you on May 1st. If you don't get around to it on May 1st, that's perfectly fine. On July 1, whenever you start trying to upload your 24, 25 pay periods, the system will let you know that you are required to have one inputted at that time. So in order to complete your payroll schedule, it is actually listed whenever you log into the Gemini employer portal, it is in the reporting area. And if you just hover over it, the payroll schedule is there and you would go ahead and click on that. Now, once you click on the payroll schedule, you're going to see that it, there is two tables available. And the first section is the payroll schedule, which is going to be your active payroll schedules at the top. And then you also have a payroll schedule history where you're going to see all of your previous payroll schedules that you've entered for previous fiscal years. Now on the table, you're gonna see, it's gonna display the fiscal year, your payroll frequency, the first pay date, your job category. So it'll list all that information right there on the front of the screen so you don't have to look that up whenever you drill into each one. Again, important note, it is not going to open until May 1st. So don't go out there and try to play around in the system right now because you're not gonna see any of these enhancements on your current payroll schedule that is out there. Now, once you click on the add payroll schedule, you're going to have three steps that you will need to go through in order to start the payroll schedule process. So on the first step, you're just gonna be selecting the fiscal year and the first pay date. So you will note that you should have separate payroll schedules if there are different first pay dates. So that would mean that your administrators usually start getting paid maybe July 15th. So they should be on one payroll schedule and your teachers start getting paid in August, so they should have a different one. So if any of your job categories have a different first pay date or a different payroll frequency or payment lag, you should have different ones for those categories. Your second step is choosing the district's payroll frequency and payment lag. So your payroll frequency would be how often that they're being paid. So if they're just paid once a month, you're gonna choose monthly, you can choose bi-weekly, semi-monthly. So we're wanting to know how often you're actually paying your employees. And the other option that you're gonna have to choose is your payment lag. So you might say, what in the world is a payment lag? Well, the payment lag refers to the number of days that are between that pay period end date and the pay date. So there are three different options that you can choose. You can choose a current lag, a positive, or a negative lag. So that payment lag chosen is going to determine all those dates to pre-fill in for you on the payroll schedule. So kind of the most common one I would see that is used is the current lag. So that just means that your end date and pay date are going to be the same on your file. A positive lag, that just means whatever the end date is of that file, we are going to add however many days, we have one to 30, whatever many positive days that you say, we're gonna add that to the end date to try to guess and come up with your pay date. The negative lag then, we're gonna be subtracting either one to 30 days from your end date. So that negative lag that is something new this year, 
Now, don't worry if you're not quite sure which lag to choose, you will have that ability to make corrections, reset it, start over if you don't like the dates that we are pre-filling in for you. The last step is choosing that job category and the type of employee that that payroll schedule applies to. So as I said earlier, that your administrators typically start receiving their first paycheck in July. So as you set up those first two steps, you're gonna wanna think about that if you're going to be choosing administrator. Same thing with teachers, they usually get their first one in August or September. So as you're going through those first couple steps, you're gonna be wanting to choose that first pay date then for your teachers, if you're gonna choose it on this third page. Sometimes even districts might have substitutes, hourly people, they might be paid on different dates or they might have a different payment lag. You're choosing different begin and end dates. So again, have separate payroll schedules for each one of those. And keep in mind that whatever you are putting on the payroll schedule with us has to match exactly what's in your payroll software. So that whenever your payroll software creates that file, it is matching these numbers exactly because we will definitely give you an error or reject if it's not exactly right. Now, after you choose the job category and the type of employee, you can either choose to pre-fill in the schedule or manual entry. So manual entry is something new this year where you will have the ability just to have a blank payroll schedule and you will have to fill out all that begin and end and pay dates manually. If you do the pre-fill, pre we're gonna try to guess all of that information basically on those two previous screens that you had filled out for us with the payment lag, the payroll frequency, and we're gonna try to create a schedule for you. Now, if you choose the pre-fill schedule option, what we're gonna do is we are going to create as many rows as what you said your payroll frequency was. So if you listed that you have a monthly payroll frequency, we're going to create 12 different lines based upon that information that you had selected. If you chose bi-weekly, then we're gonna list 26 lines. So you will see however many um, pay period rows based upon that payroll frequency. And we will list that begin, end, and pay date. And you can adjust those two if you don't like any of those dates. Now the first pay row is going to be that pay date that you selected on that first step. And then everything else will be generated based upon that payment lag. The manual entry was going to be the same thing as far as we will create however many rows based upon that payroll frequency. So if you, uh, if you said that they got paid bi-weekly, then we are going to create then 26 rows then for you in order for you to manually complete. Now, if you filled out those first couple screens and whenever we generated it, you say, absolutely not, that is not what I meant at all. We have that reset feature on here. Just kind of keep in mind that if you started making corrections, if you click reset, you're wiping out all of your um, information that you had corrected it to. So whenever you click reset, it is going to let you know that everything is going to be deleted. And you can see those schedule attributes. So those first few steps that you had filled out, they're all there. So if you realize you entered the wrong pay date, if you wanna try a different lag, if there's a different payroll frequency, you can change all those and even generation type. So if you tried to um, create a payroll schedule with a lag and you still don't like it, go ahead, you can just change it to manual entry and we'll just provide those blank lines and for you to complete.
You also have the ability to add and delete rows too as well. So um, a new row, if you click add row, it's just going to create on that first line, it's all going to be blank. And you'll have to manually enter a begin in and pay date. But once you save, it will put it in the order of pay date once you click save. The delete, that is going to be the little trash can icon that's going to be to the right. And once you click that, it'll just ask you for sure if you want to delete that. If you had done the payroll schedules before, if you've gone in there recently and looked, the action button is no longer there. So there used to be an action button to the left, I think, of the number of the payroll where then you had to edit each line or delete each line. You had to save it. You had to save at the top. So all those double saves, all that is gone. And now whenever you edit, you can do it all at once. So whenever you click edit rows after you've saved your payroll schedule and you go back in, what it's going to do is it's going to make all of those boxes editable at once. So there's no longer saving each line. Now you can see whenever you do it, like I said, you can change the begin, end, and pay date on any of those. One tip that I will kind of point out is that on your first pay, whenever it's dealing with the teachers, whenever we're generating that begin and end and pay date for you, in this uh, example, it would have created a begin date of 9-1, end date of 9-15 with a pay date of 9-15. But school actually started and the teacher started working on August 21st. So it can be helpful if you change that begin date to August 21st because you normally upload calendars into your payroll software and your payroll software is automatically pulling dates for you for each pay period report depending upon that begin date and end date. So a lot of districts at the end of the year at annual certification time realize whenever they roll up, maybe they only have 175 days paid and they don't know exactly why it brought over that incorrect amount of days. And a lot of times it's because of that first pay. So maybe keep that in mind. You don't have to do it, but that does help your payroll software in making sure that you are getting those correct amount of days. Now, once you think that you've edited everything, you like everything that you've entered, when you click save, all the errors need to be resolved before it will actually save. So if there is an error on your payroll schedule based upon the dates that you may be changed and messed around with, it will give you an error, it'll give you that red banner, but then what it'll also do is have that little icon down there that is going to display which row is the problem row. So on this example, you can see that it's telling you the begin date has to be after the end date of that previous row. So on the previous line, it had that the payroll scheduled 831, that that was the end date, but then it had the begin date as 831 on the next line. Well, that would be double counting that day. So you can't have that. So it's just letting you know, you'll just need to go in there, edit that row to change it then to nine one, and then that edit would go away. The next area is still the same as last year you will have to identify if there is a flexible benefit plan that you are paying or if it is a special pay. So the flex plan box, that is if you have a flexible benefit plan with your either teachers, if you're filling out that payroll schedule or administrators. So to TRS, a flexible benefit plan is an option to receive cash in lieu of taking the health insurance. So if you have one, you know, um, because they are kind of a pain for you guys to keep track of. So if you are paying that flexible benefit plan, if you are paying a cash taker, that box needs to be checked on each pay date that that is happening. 
the special pay box, you can use that if you're adding another row and that pay date line is outside of your regular pay dates. So in my example here, the most common one is maybe there was some summer school, maybe there was a summer camp or a workshop. So normally their first paycheck was you know, August 30th. Well, but they did some summer school, so you actually had to create this special pay for them because it was outside of their regular 12 or 26 pays that they receive. So that's usually the common one. Also, maybe you had forgotten to pay somebody some extra duty and they wanted it now versus waiting till the next pay. You can just add a special pay line and click that because those begin and end dates of a special pay they can overlap. So as long as you mark special pay, those begin and end dates can be the same as another row. This was also a new feature that was added is a memo line. So on each schedule detail line, you're going to see a memo that you can type in. I think it's like 3000 characters. So you have tons of space in order to write some information in there but this is strictly for the district's use. So we're not gonna be using that. Don't think that you're writing a comment to TRS letting you know what something is. We will not be using this. This is just something that can hopefully help you figure out maybe what that payment was. So if you had a special pay, you can just have special pay for summer school, or if you had to pay somebody outside, you can say, you know, John Doe, missed extra duty, just whatever that you would like to help you remember maybe what that payment was tied to. Another new option is associated reports. So once you get back to your regular payroll screen, you're gonna see that in that action dropdown box, there is a view or an edit or a delete. So edit, easy. If you just wanna make corrections to it, you're gonna be choosing edit. If you wanna delete the, the payroll schedule, just know you cannot delete it. If there are any reports that have, um, that are listed associated with that pay date, you will not be able to delete that line. As you're setting them up now, if you have set up multiple ones and you're playing around with it, you can delete it as much as you want to and add new ones because you're not uploading any reports right now. So just, Keep that in mind that you cannot delete if there is an associated report with it. Now your view is going to be only read only capabilities. So you can't edit anything in there, but you will now see an associated report with that payroll detail line. So what that means is you can hover over that new column and it'll tell you what all of those that information is. So the first part is your report ID. So if you had somebody with that begin, in, and pay date on line one, then you are going to see that report ID that you had posted for that line. You're also gonna see what type of report was it. Was it your defined benefit that you, every payroll send in? Was it a defined contribution, which that's the SSP that they can optionally participate in with us? It's gonna say whether it's a DB or a DC report. It's also going to help you keep track. When was that authorization date of the report? It's gonna let you know when, what uh, date that that authorization was. And then it's gonna tell you the number of members on that report. So even if you uploaded and you had a report with lots of different begin, end, and pay dates, if there was one person with that begin, end, and pay date, it's going to let you know on this screen that there was somebody on that report ID. Now with the report ID, you see that there's a little link on there and what that will actually do is take you to that exact report. So you can see there could be lots of different reports. So if you did adjustments, you can see at the 
the line five, there's two, there could be five different reports if there was somebody that had that begin, end, and pay date on that row. So if there is even one person, you're going to see that report and you can quickly go to it to see who then was listed on the report. Now, once you see an associated report on that line, you cannot delete out that line either. So if that associated report is on here, you cannot delete the payroll schedule and you can also not delete that whole line. 